Telegraphs International, we've produced the world's first full carbon fibre aeromet helicopter. It's uh, branded under the trademark of Vivo Strength, and that refers to the patented technology of the design which incorporates the, the cabin, the centre section, tail boom and empennage structure of the helicopter. Uh, we have a variety of other um, Evo Strength uh, patents running as well and uh, we manufacture the um, main rotor blades and tail rotor blades in house as well. New Zealand has a, a, a very strong um, composite technology base. Uh, we design um, America's Cup race shots, um, new boats that now fly, 90 foot long and they fly, and, and that technology is, uh, is cutting edge and it leads the world. Um, and the development of the helicopter program uh, based on that technology was a natural progression. Two helicopters a day. The silver one is our high power version, which is a 650 horsepower engine derated to 450. Um, and that's designed to give the owner the opportunity of a full um, six passenger payload and full fuel and operate at high altitude and high temperatures. Um, our entry level helicopter, which is a KC630, which is the red one behind me, is powered by the Rolls Royce 300. And um, that is, a, as I say, it's an entry level helicopter, it's a low cost turbine. Uh, it's also capable of running six seats. Right, um, type certification program with the New Zealand CAA has already started. Uh, we're in the early stages. Uh, we're looking for a, uh, an expansion of the New Zealand bilateral airworthiness agreement with the FAA, and that will involve a shadow certification with them. Um, the uptake around the world from a, um, a user perspective, uh, there's a, a lot of interest in the helicopter program. Uh, this show has been fantastic. Um, it's a, it's a, almost an unwritten rule that if you have a successful show and um, you take a good level of expressions of interest that uh, it signals the um, a future success of the program. And this show is, um, has produced some amazing results. The water landing was effectively uneventful. Everything went as, as it should do in a condition like that. And uh, we both managed to get out of the aircraft without any injuries. The landing was amazingly smooth for an emergency landing. The aircraft's done about 200 hours of flying. And um, the reason we were over the water is because we are um, still in our, our you know, flight evaluation phase, if you like. Um, up until now, the helicopter's been flying really well. Composite Helicopters is a wholly owned New Zealand company. We have designed the world's first all composite single turbine helicopter. For three years we have been in research and development with our prototype KC518. We are now well into our flight testing program. The KC518 helicopter fuselage is a low cost, rapid build, carbon Kevlar hybrid. The main rotor blades and the tail rotor blades are made entirely of carbon fibre. The helicopter uses the same carbon fibre technology that is found in America's Cup race boats, high-end sports equipment and new passenger jetliners. We have produced a lightweight, high-strength airframe that has allowed us to design a very robust transmission. The drivetrain, the rotor systems have allowed for a time between overhaul of almost twice that of other helicopters in service. This results in lower direct operating costs for the owner. The airframe and rotor blades are not subject to corrosion as they're manufactured from carbon fibre. We can use the initial design of the KC518 composite helicopter to evolve new helicopters with an increased seating capacity and performance specifications. Our immediate goal is to obtain FAA certification. To achieve certification will require extra funding and will take approximately three years to complete. Obtaining additional investment will assure the timely completion of our certification and open up the marketplace to every helicopter owner and operator.
Composite Helicopters has exhibited at several air shows throughout the world. Our helicopter, dedicated and enthusiastic staff have been positively received by the helicopter industry. We look forward to an exciting future as an emerging force in the helicopter industry. We were at 500 feet when the emergency occurred. From the moment of the, the initial failure, there was a very large thump. Um, we knew immediately that we'd had a, um, a catastrophic uh, failure. Um, and uh, the following minute, um, 20 seconds or thereabouts, um, was, uh, was actually quite a long time. The part that failed is, um, is a sub-assembly piece of a, a swashplate assembly. This was a, a standard aviation part, um, purchased third party, and used as a standard item uh, widely um, across the helicopter industry. When this particular part failed, we lost the phase control for the main rotor, and that prevented us from entering auto rotation, so we actually were stuck at 500 feet. When you're a test pilot, and um, especially when, you fly, when you're flying a development helicopter, you are permanently aware of a catastrophic failure. You, you try to, to anticipate uh, an emergency procedure. But in our case, uh, we had only one second to analyze the situation, and we realized that we lost completely the control, so this is a, the worst situation in an helicopter. Uh, one of the most significant things that I recall is that the, the violence of the vibration, where Norbert would go to point at a, a potential LZ and uh, Norbert's hand was waving because of the, the, the momentum, the energy in the aircraft and the violence of the movement. And at this moment we, we stopped to think. We, we just tried to, to fly together, so to stay calm. Uh, when I saw the, um, the initial video taken from the tail of the helicopter and you could see that a, um, a major component in the, in the rotor head had, uh, had broken, and my first thoughts were, uh, this isn't going to be survival. I've, uh, I've seen the results of quite a lot of aircraft crashes over the years. We have seen a big helicopter uh, lose a similar component on a tail rotor, and it ripped the whole machine apart by losing a uh, fairly small part of the tail rotor. So uh, it's, it says something for the, uh, the integrity of these machines that uh, even the fuselage held together, let alone all the mechanical components. The, the helicopter went through some fairly uh, wild pitching moments. It went from rolling left to rolling right to nose up and then flipping over going nose down um, and then wanting to rotate about the mast um, and the tail rudder. With such vibration we were unable to do standard things. So Peter was at the flight controls. I had uh, my end uh, on an handle to, to be sure to, to stay, to remain on my seat and I tried to to support Peter to, to design a field to land and to, uh, to I was helping him on the cyclic, the only way to, uh, to guide the helicopter. Once we got within um, uh, reach of the ground, um, for use of a better word, um, and treetop level, uh, we knew that we would survive. And uh, the objective then was to make the most of the crash. The last part um, of the manoeuvring was, was quite extreme and I would suggest that we had probably a 50% input in that. It became very apparent that we were not going to have enough rotor RPM to make it all the way to the bottom. And so we pulled it up even tighter and um, went for the top of a knoll, uh, which was the uh, desired landing zone. And that was actually, at that point, it was right into wind, which was great, huh? because at the bottom we want to use as much flare as we can. And unfortunately, as we approached the landing zone, um, the helicopter drifted towards a tree. And so we had to encourage it to the left of the tree, but then effectively it was almost a, a mirror image of a downwind quick stop, um, which is a typical training manoeuvre. Yeah. Um, and the intention there is, is that you, you flare the aircraft 
and uh, pull the aircraft round in a very tight turn so that we came in tail first. Um, and the intention of that is so that the fuselage absorbs the energy and it protects the occupants. Um, and really that part of it worked out like clockwork. What did save us? Um, certainly we have been lucky. Our experience was really helpful because we, we stayed very calm and very professional. But um, what is obvious when you see the movies and um, when I remember this catastrophic situation, what is obvious is that uh, we have been saved by the composite structure. The fact that uh, it's a monoblock system, it, it didn't save uh, only our life. We, we were really fit just after the crash. Immediately we jumped from the helicopter and we were able to, to manage the, the situation. Well, this is the world's first single-piece carbon fiber aramid helicopter fuselage. We have specifically designed it as a, an energy-absorbing structure. Traditional um, helicopter manufacturing revolves around steel tube structures and riveted aluminium structures. Uh, the difference between that manufacturing process and the EVA strength technology we're using now is the helicopter fuselage is manufactured as a single piece. No rivets, uh, no bolts um, in the airframe at all. And the whole idea is, is that the fuselage and these composite structures transfer all the flight loads um, from the rotor system. Um, and um, in the event of an accident, um, because we have this almost eggshell type approach, um, we have a very energy absorbing um, structure. When I um, first saw the pictures, it just looked like uh, an aircraft that had perhaps rolled over uh, on landing and uh, it was only after I'd seen the video and you realised how hard the aircraft uh, hit the ground. It was quite remarkable uh, how well it held together. It was expected the rotor blades broke themselves to pieces, but the main structure uh, was pretty much uh, perfectly intact. With many of the smaller uh, single engine uh, traditional helicopters, the main rotors are quite flexible. Our rotor system is a relatively rigid main rotor blade. The fact that we had no main rotor blade strike with the uh, tail boom was um, really a, a, a life-saving feature. Had we had a blade strike onto the boom, uh, certainly I doubt we would have survived. So um, blade clearances to the boom, the rigidity of the main rotor, the fact that our fuselage structure is single piece carbon aramid and is very, very strong, where because of the rotation of the helicopter around the mast, it's, it's quite likely that a riveted structure may have collapsed, in which case there would have been an in-flight breakup of the helicopter, of which uh, it would not have been survivable. So from our own point of view, we're very thankful to having survived. But when we come back and we look at the design characteristic of the aircraft and, and the objectives of the design being safety, strength, energy absorbing, um, the, the carbon fibre uh, structure has without doubt proven itself. Um, I don't think a normal helicopter would have withstood those forces. Uh, these guys are very lucky, I think, that uh, they're a machine that looked after them. It's a real innovation, question of safety. Yeah, just amazing.